It is the superintendent's responsibility to call for an investigation if he feels excessive force was used. In other words, he does the investigation first. How do you come up with excessive force when there's no injury and the inmate yells for a half hour how little force was used? You don't come up with an investigation. It's that simple. You don't call the CISU. You get it done in a day. Okay? Unless you have some other motive besides the use of force issue. The superintendent of the Sarnia Jail is Ken Fitzgerald. He's been with us for several years. When the closure of the three jails was announced, the presidents of each local were given time off by the union to organize opposition to the closures. The union pays the government my wage plus 20% for the inconvenience of the jail having me off work. The government then just continues to pay me. Mr. Fitzgerald refused to pay me and didn't tell me <clears throat> until the money didn't show up. He stated he didn't have to pay me. Only when I emailed the deputy minister's office and threatened to contact the media was there a mad rush to make sure I was paid. The other two presidents didn't have that problem. We have two union members who were accused of interfering with an investigation. One of them was asked about the investigation while he is at work. He stated he'd rather not talk about it. These investigations are not supposed to be mentioned or talked about in the workplace whatsoever or anywhere else. The next week he is called by the superintendent at home, suspended, and has since been fired. He was never asked about what took place. He had witnesses and provided names. Not one witness was interviewed by management. Not one. Two unclassified officers were suspended with pay. Unclassified officers work, the, um, I hate to call them part-time because they work so much, okay? They uh, work vacation relief and other irregular hours. When they're suspended, the agreement that we have in the collective agreement says, the suspension of a fixed term employee, which they are, will be based on average, averaging the straight time hours worked by the employee during the previous 13 weeks. It's not rocket science. Go back 13 weeks, add up the hours, divide by 13, that's what you pay. Okay? The superintendent scheduled these two suspended employees 12 hours a week for 13 weeks after they were suspended, hours they could not work. He then used those hours to calculate their pay. So instead of paying them 36 hours a week like they're supposed to get, they're getting paid the minimal amount that he could possibly pay them. There's no way you can even figure this out. I don't even know how you would figure this out. He deliberately and maliciously went out of his way to cause undue hardship and stress for these two people. I was suspended for over six months before I was fired. I had a vacation booked for part of it. This is sort of a funny thing, really. I mean, I had a vacation booked for part of it, and uh, the suspensions went over the vacation period. So I got a note three quarters of the way through my vacation period from management that they had unsuspended me for a week, taken 40 hours vacation away from me, and resuspended me again. Oh, come on. Hey, I mean, and however, even though I wasn't suspended, I still could not enter the Sarnia jail. Okay, they made sure that they stated that. Okay. Um, Shortly after that incident, the superintendent told his managers not to allow staff to have union representation in any meetings they have with management. Finally, he violated the compressed work week agreement that we have and has removed hours from the schedule. This is a compressed work week agreement that, I, that we have, okay? The signature's on the front, his initials on every page, every single page. There's a schedule, okay? It's signed, okay? He's taken, he's taken hours out of that schedule that we agreed upon and is running the jail short in order to do that. My vice president went out to speak with him concerning the matter and he said he held this in his hand and said, 
I don't see anything in here that says I can't run a person short. He said, I can run five people short if I feel like it. That's safe. <laughs> So I actually told somebody of the public that, uh, a lady, and she looked at me and she showed her frown and she goes, that wouldn't even be safe. I said, no, it wouldn't be safe, okay? As I'm writing, as, as I was writing this, I received a call telling that the superintendent was intentionally running the jail short staff again this week. What if the police chief decided that he could run five officers short if he felt like it? Take five cruisers off the road to save some money. Would you feel safe? Would you question whether Sarnia had the right person in that position? Because of his, because of his initiating two groundless for, use of force investigation, because of his suspending and firing of staff without just cause, because of his malicious actions in denying staff their rightful pay, because of his order to managers to deny union representation to our members, because of his intentional violation of a press work week agreement, and because of his position concerning staffing at the Sarnia Jail, which jeopardizes the safety of the community, correctional officers, and inmates, I, on behalf of Local 128, have asked Minister of Corrections to replace Ken Fitzgerald the superintendent of the Sarnia Jail. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> One other thing just before I just before I take any questions. I got an email. Actually I got a text message last night that I'd like to share with you. Sorry for the time here. This is what I got last night from somebody. As part of your press release, I'd like you to state that, you, that the union members unanimously, this is from, this is from a correctional officer at the Sarnia Jail, that the union members unanimously are afraid of retribution from the Sarnia Jail management for coming and showing support to affected members because of the witch hunt type tactics management are inflicting on the employees at the Sarnia Jail. Mm -hmm. So if you see our numbers down here a bit today, there's, that's because people are afraid to show up. Oh, they're afraid they're going to get fired, that's why. How would you like to be working a place that acted like that? How would you like to be underneath a superintendent that acted like that? How would you like to stand in front of that man there and he say, you can't have union representation, get that person out of my office, and then proceed to warn and counsel you about something? Okay? We're fed up with it. We're fed up with the use of force. We're just doing our jobs. Thank you.